right. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to my uh, talk about uh, the use of AI uh, when uh, doing software architecture. And my clicker stopped working, of course. Let's try again. Ah, nice. All right. Um, as I said, we will be talk I will be talking about uh, the use of AI uh, when doing software architecture. Who am I? I'm Marcel Schutte. I'm a uh, lead uh, solution architect at uh, Society uh, Netherland. Um, and uh, I work at a, a, very, very, a lot of different uh, clients, just uh, as an architect. Well, uh, the past couple of years have seen uh, quite a lot of changes in uh, uh, software architecture and in the work that architects are doing. A long time ago, uh, We'll do this like this then. Right, very long time ago, in ancient times, I think perhaps 15, 20 years ago, uh, architects did their job at, in their own ivory tower with a lot of big design up front and very much uh, detached from the teams uh, that were going to build the, those architectures. Oh. Uh, we're also uh, all very uh, thankful those, change, uh, those times have, uh, have gone. And we're now at the, times have changed, the modern architect who is really at the heart of development, really agile, communicating with all stakeholders, but also with all the teams. And uh, with that also influencing the, the, uh, uh, the applications uh, they're working on. But um, last year, year and a half, we've seen the introduction of uh, uh, AI and large language models, which can really help us as an architect in our jobs uh, from day to day. And uh, I'll be show, uh, later on I'll be showing you some uh, uh, examples of that. I'm going to do some live demos, so I really hope that's going to work well. Um, but we'll see you uh, uh, in a second. Um, also, in the last couple, of, last year or so, uh, a lot of people are, are saying uh, architects will be replaced, developers will be replaced. I don't think so. I really think that architects who know how to use AI will replace those architects, but architects will stay, uh, 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 will be needed at any uh, time uh, in the development cycle. So, let's go on. But AI, can, we can use that as a supercharging uh, agent to, for uh, our software architecture. Uh, first, go back to a little bit uh, detail on AI. Uh, AI is artificial intelligence, computer that thinks, uh, something like that. And we can use this to help us uh, create better software. N we're not going to uh, let the AI create the complete uh, architecture and the complete uh, development uh, uh, of the, uh, the, uh, the software, but we can only use it as a uh, supercharging uh, to make sure we do it faster, better, and uh, smarter. Uh, what I'm going to show you later on is uh, how, I, uh, how we can use an LLM, a uh, large language model, as an uh, AI assistant for the architect. And the last couple of months, we've seen a lot of uh, um, uh, AI assistance for developers, uh, starting to, uh, as a co-pilot, uh, uh, a JetBrains uh, uh, assistant. Uh, but this is purely focused on uh, software architecture. Uh, let's have a small look at LLMs. Uh, no. Most of you have probably heard of LLMs. They are trained on a lot of uh, data, a lot of code, a lot of, well, also on a lot of uh, software architectures. And uh, they are able to uh, predict uh, the words that are needed to fulfill a certain query you have on uh, software architecture, in this case. These are a couple of uh, ways uh, we, can uh, we can use uh, LLMs to help us as architects. 
it is a great way of uh, brainstorming ideas. What, what do we need for, uh, to, uh, for this solution? Uh, we can also automate documentation. Uh, I have a, uh, a demo later on about this, but uh, they, can, they are really good with language, creating language, um, or, well, even writing documentation in this case. Um, and also, uh, one step further in your architecture is also the generation of uh, code snippets uh, well, or components from the designs you've created. And those designs we've, uh, we create are also the designs we create in uh, uh, working together with those uh, LLMs. All right, uh, before I'm uh, diving into the uh, first live demo, I want to introduce you to uh, the case we'll be working on uh, today. It's a pizzeria. Uh, I am told it means uh, the Italian dream, Il Sogno Italiano. I just have to believe that. Um, well, uh, it's a small uh, uh, pizzeria who wants to expand and make, sure, uh, and, uh, make uh, online ordering available to uh, their client base. That's uh, this is a small uh, uh, introduction. For, let's have a look at our first demo. So, no. All right. I'll be using a uh, chat GPT in this case uh, for the uh, Yes, all right. I have to. Oh, I had to open my uh, document with the codes uh, of, uh, with the prompts uh, I prepared, because I'm not going to be typing everything in uh, right now. I'm just going to copy it to the ChatGPT, uh, and I did it. Bef uh, first, let's start with the first one. Very short. I'm a software architect that needs a little help with developing a software architecture. Can you help me? Just a small question. Be nice to it, uh, ask it politely. <laughs> Don't just tell it to do something, just ask. You never know. Uh, please, uh, yes. Uh, always be friendly, you never know when the terminators are showing up. So. And, uh, that's. Come on. Hmm? Try it again. This would be terrible if it's... Oh, come on. Uh, yeah. Why is the Wi-Fi... Yeah, well, I'm going to go and try, please. I'm going to switch uh, networks. This is terrible. All right. All right, let's switch. Try that one. <laughs> Refresh. Ah, no. oh, come on. Switching back. It worked uh, earlier. Yeah. Yeah. 
Ja. If you know why I'm not getting any internet, I'd like to know, but come on. Uh, let's see. I can actually. Uh, does this uh, nobody home? Well, let's drive. Okay, let's see if I can use. Uh, Let's try that one. I just hope that it gives the, right, uh, the same answers it <laughs> this one did. <laughs> Let's go to Google Gemini. Am I in some kind of... All right, it's a, a, a chat GPT issue. So, uh, let me see, over here. I'm still gonna, uh, I'll, uh, let's see. Absolutely, it, it, It's always, uh, uh, it always gives an answer, that's, that's quite right, uh, quite nice. Uh, still keep checking what, uh, what it uh, uh, gives you. All right, a lot of text just by asking if, you, if, if it can help. Well, the answer is yes, it will help. Let me see. I have another prompt. Uh, it's a bit... It's a bit more text. All right. Yeah, that's, that's why I didn't type it live. That's why I... <laughs> Uh, just very short, uh, I'm developing an online tool where customers can order pizzas from the local p uh, pizza place. The pizzas will then be delivered by the delivery people of the restaurant. Key features are browsing the menu with all the pizza options for the customer. The pizza bakers need to be able to see what they need to bake. And the delivery driver should get a message when the pizza is ready to be delivered. And be able to see the address the pizza needs to be delivered to. The back end of this application is written in Java with the Postgres uh, SQL database as storage. We haven't decided on the front-end technology uh, just yet. This is a tool for one specific pizza restaurant in my hometown. So, small scale, it, it, you give a lot of the features you want, and you just uh, give it an enter, and it's uh, gonna start. Well, <laughs> great project. <laughs> that sounds like a great project. Yeah, well, it is, it's for a pizza place. Um, uh, it gives a, a, a basic, uh, uh, option for an architecture, in this case, Max, in this case, microservices, and uh, with uh, a couple of uh, smaller services you can implement uh, just for this. All right, this already gives, I think, let me see, well, it goes on. This is nice to see because it gives basically the same answer uh, as ChatGPT did. Uh, and yesterday I ran through all my prompts and not a problem, of course, but uh, pretty much the same database, uh, front-end, haven't decided. It already gives three possible uh, options, uh, React, Angular, and uh, Flutter, I think, yeah. Um, it also gives you uh, some benefits, some uh, uh, considerations you have to take into uh, account when you're developing it further. And... Uh, and also some further uh, uh, resources uh, 
to actually help you in your uh, decision making on do, is this really something I want to do? Is it a microservice, a microservice architecture that I really want to implement? Um, well, high level overview. You can go deeper and deeper. Uh, but I, I have one more question for this demo, then I'm going back to my presentation for some uh, uh, extra information. Like I said, uh, in the uh, previous prompt, I, did, I specified we don't know what uh, uh, front-end technology we want to use. So I'm wondering if it can help me. Very short. What would you suggest to use as a front-end technology? We've already seen the three uh, uh, he suggested uh, uh, previously. But I, I'd really like to know what it is, is going to be. Uh, well not what it's going to be, what it really re recommends. Yeah, start thinking. Uh, well, another, some uh, reaction. Uh, with uh, more details on why you would use it, and why you would... Uh, 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 well, and factors to weigh in. What does your team know? What does uh, uh, project complexity all those kinds of things. Um, yeah, uh, it, it really helps you uh, create, uh, create a, a, a way of thinking about your architecture and just not just go for uh, We always do microservice. We always do React. No, it might not be the, uh, the best, best choice. Just give the extra uh, things. All right. Um, okay. No, let's go back to my... Uh, Presentation. This was the first demo. I have uh, several more. I hope that goes a little uh, better than the first one. All right. A little recap. Uh, well, it's a power of collaboration. It's working together with your AI and getting ideas out. Uh, what I did, I defined the product goals and the constraints. Uh, I know the backend is going to be Java. I know it. I know the key key features of the software. And. Um, uh, at that point, uh, the, uh, in this case, Gemini uh, uh, analyzed my input and generated the first uh, architecture uh, choices. And uh, with extra questions, extra information, you can get uh, into more detail. And so together, we explored the possibilities and identified a promising architectural direction. Sure, this is not final. And uh, I have a question over there. I haven't asked that one, but it, yeah. pro it probably will. Yeah. You would probably uh, also say, hey, uh, microservices should be perhaps more complex. I agree. I agree. Um, that is why it won't take over our work. Yeah, uh, it's something you do together. I, I uh, took the Microsoft uh, architecture now because it suggested, and well, I have to get through my presentation. <laughs> but, uh, but in the end, uh, it is a collaboration. And if you think, uh, well, we better work with a modular monolith or a small, even a small monolith, <laughs> Uh, would be a better choice just for this uh, pizza place because it, at this point it's one pizza place, small one, it might be enough. Um, a couple of weeks ago I saw a really uh, nice uh, presentation about the modular monolith. It, it, that would actually make a lot more sense because then if the pizza place is expanding and you can uh, at a later stage uh, extract those uh, uh, services. All right. Um, this is what we did. Um, well, really, this is what we already, uh, this is the last part of the previous de uh, demo. Uh, I need to know what kind of front-end technology uh, we're going to use. That was this one. I skipped ahead a little bit. Uh, same thing, collaborative decision-making uh, process, the defi you're de defining your goals. You're exploring options with LLMs, uh, evaluate, decide. And basically, and if you're not happy with the answer, keep asking, keep asking questions. Um, 
All right, so well, we made a choice for, a, uh, well, I'm going to make the choice for the front end now. It's going to be React. Um, but that we need to put that uh, in writing to make sure everyone knows we're gonna, uh, going to be using React. We make a little step uh, in our whole process to the part where the main architecture is done and now we are going to make choices and uh, decisions that are going to uh, affect our whole uh, development uh, cycle. Um, I asked questions about React. I'm going, uh, I'm going to tell the LM, uh, well, in a minute, uh, that we're going to choose React. And uh, I wanted to document uh, the decision. And those decisions, I like to uh, put those in uh, ADRs, architecture decision records. It's a, a way of documenting your, uh, uh, all your choices you make in your whole uh, architecture, uh, well, architectural journey. Um, and by uh, putting those in writing, you can uh, have it as reference uh, for future uh, uh, choices. And uh, with ADRs, you make it uh, uh, transparent to the whole company, to the whole team, to all the teams. All right. Oh, how do you create effective ADRs? Uh, the, there are a couple of key components in there. Uh, of course, the context. Uh, why uh, do we need to make a choice? Uh, what are the grounds we are going to make our uh, decision? And, uh, of course, the decision uh, as the main part. Um, And uh, still uh, some more benefits. It gives a strong foundation for uh, improving communication collaboration within the team, because you make it uh, available. You're not going, and you're not the architect that comes in that says you need to do React and you head out. No, you explain why you do some, uh, what, why you are doing, what you are doing. Um, and because you put it in writing on Confluence or on in your, uh, in your uh, Git repository. Doesn't really matter where you put it, just make sure it's a central place for all uh, uh, participants, to, uh, well, all your uh, team members to find those. Um, and when you make it available to uh, the entire team, you reduce the risk of architecture. Yeah. You know why you chose, uh, uh, you made some uh, decisions. Um, and also, in the future, you can make better decisions based on uh, the context in which the previous ones were made. All right, those were ADRs. Let's have a demo and hope it goes better this time. All right, we have a Gemini. Okay. All right. All right. You've convinced me. We will be using React. Uh, can you write an ADR? Very, uh, well, still very much open for uh, interpretation by the LLM. You're going to ask, give me an ADR. So it's going to make up uh, a, a way of creating ADR. Author Bart, yeah, well, that's that's a, uh, that's a, uh, that's Gemini's old name, I guess. A date, status, a proposed, context, uh, some considerations, and uh, yeah. oh, yeah, <laughs> that's why we do it together. <laughs> so you can check whether or not there are, uh, well, I think Japanese, Chinese, well, <laughs> something. Uh, uh, that's why you keep uh, doing it in, uh, in collaboration with uh, uh, the LLM. All right, but now it made up its own way of creating ADR. That's not the one we use at the company I currently work at. So, uh, I have a... A lot more text. 
That is actually not the template we use at our company. Could you rewrite this ADR according to the following template? And could you also write it in Markdown? Uh, uh, title, uh, status, uh, what is the status such as proposed, accepted, rejected, deprecated, su superseded, etc. Context, what is the issue that we're seeing that is motivating this decision or change? Decision, what is the change that, we, uh, that we're proposing and or doing? And consequences, what becomes easier or more difficult uh, to do because of this change? If that's the uh, template you use at your company, you just uh, provide the template. And um, yesterday in ChatGPT, it took that template. Let's try. Well, it's using the template. It needs a little work, but once again, it's a collaboration. Um, I'm going to be saying that a lot uh, today, but um, well, it, it is a, collab a collaboration all the way through. Uh, it can help you with uh, the first part of getting it uh, set up, then you can make the changes uh, you want to it, uh, if you want to make changes. And, uh, and this gets you uh, this very small ADR in this case. There are, of course, changes, uh, decisions that need uh, a little bit more text. All right. Little recap. Uh, you can streamline ADRs with LLMs. Uh, use them to capture the context and the decision details because um, we, we made a very small choice. We said, uh, uh, give me the uh, possible uh, 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 front-end frameworks, uh, and I picked that one. Uh, but in, uh, in normal practice, you keep asking questions and you give more context, you create more, uh, uh, well, you create more context and more uh, uh, input for the ADR. Uh, it creates a nice, clear and concise rationale and it automates formatting. It, it, uh, it uh, saves you a lot of time well, with ADRs. And then the next part uh, that I want to talk about, it's going to save you a lot more time. I'm, uh, what I want to try is creating uh, C4 models with an uh, LLM. Um, I don't know if everybody knows what C4 is, but I have a, a small uh, introduction. Uh, it's a lightweight framework to create uh, diagrams of your uh, architecture. Uh, it's very structured. It's uh, it focused on four uh, key levels of context, container, component, and code. And that's why they call it uh, C4. Uh, context is very high level. I'll well, we'll see that in, uh, in a bit. Container is just a little bit uh, further down. But the C4 model gives you enough input to talk to your stakeholders. And that the stakeholders in this case are business, but also developers in the teams that are going to build it. So you get different levels of abstraction, which makes it possible uh, uh, for uh, easy communicating between stakeholders and developers. Right. As I said, there are four layers of abstraction, um, context, container, component, and code. Context, most high level, very... Uh, uh, not a lot of detail, but a clear overview of, uh, uh, of your own system and what's directly uh, uh, connected to it. Container gives you a little bit more context, gives you a little bit more, um, gives you a bit more context. Nice. Uh, I, have a, I have an image uh, for this. Look at it as maps. Uh, the first one is the context. Uh, in this case, we're looking at uh, Jersey. Little island. Uh, the first one gives you context where it is, and what uh, what are the uh, well where is somewhere in Europe it is. Uh, the container uh, diagram. This is the second one. Gives you a little bit more context. It gives you a little bit of the size, uh, distance to uh, the mainland in this case. Then we go to the component diagram. Uh, a little bit more uh, low level gives you more of the uh, what's inside uh, that system. And the code, those are still UML diagrams. 
Um, well, they are mainly used within the team or just uh, for your own good when you are trying to develop uh, your system. They are usually not used to uh, talk to your stakeholders, to, your, uh, uh, to the business. Right. So, those were the four levels of abstraction. Uh, some benefits uh, gives you improved communication. Uh, it gives you a better understanding of your whole system uh, for the developers, but also for the uh, for the business. Uh, and it also makes uh, analysis uh, of architectural decisions uh, 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 easier. All right. And uh, these models, uh, they're not just the drawings you just saw. Um, I use a, a tool called uh, Structurizer, which makes it possible to uh, uh, create your uh, diagrams uh, uh, based on text. And once you make it based it on text, you can also put it in your uh, pipeline so that it gets uh, and in Git, so you can easily uh, 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 see what the changes were uh, since the last uh, uh, version. Right, and let's see if Jim and I can also create these diagrams. I hope it does, because um, I tried this on the newest uh, ChatGPT, the, the 4.0. It's said to be the best one so far, so I hope Gemini, Gemini is somewhere close. All right. Um, what I'm going to... Let's see if I can make it a little bit bigger. So, all right. Now, I'm going to thank it, because once again, you never know when the Terminators are showing up. Amazing, thank you. Could you also uh, create a C4 context and container model for this architecture? I use Structurizer as a tool for this. Let's see. I hope this creates what I... No text. No. I'm going to see if this one's working again, because this one gave me a very nice... Yeah. Klein beetje context toevoegen. Uh, I have to add a little context to this. Um, I'm just going to put the pizza context in here. All right. We'll leave the uh, ADRs and the front end technology. Because that's not really necessary for uh, the Should we see what it's uh, suggesting? Is it also a microservice? Still an interest. Oh, it also says it's an interesting project. Well, cool. Uh, getting there. Let's see. Same thing. That's actually something we can use in uh, Structurizer. Yes, and it's all, yeah, it's done. Well, almost. Anyway, let's go all the way to the top. Okay, let's see. Let's go to Structurizer. I have one. So let's see. Let's see what it created. Oh, that's too bad. Oh, we got two workspaces. And still, I have to watch this. Let's. Uh, unexpected. Tokens model. 
Of course, it's, it's not doing the same thing. Can I copy that? Let's see. Just going to ask it again. Uh, because yesterday it also gave an error, but a different error. So that's. The code was fully generated. It, it already went into explanation of a. Uh, uh, let's see. Yeah. <laughs> Has some issues. No. I hope what it, what's it creating now is that it doesn't have those. Let's see. Yeah, that's right. That's something else I've already seen going wrong every time. Uh, let's see, yeah. That's, uh, uh, that's something I have to... Oh, come on. It's not the part. Um, we're back at ChatGPT, right? Well, then I'm going to. Uh, gonna spoil a little about the last uh, demo, but. Uh, ah, there it is. That one, we get there. It's too small. Uh, that's the one, that's the part I had to put in there because of the. Uh, see. Over there, configuration. I have to. Yeah. one I know. I got the same one uh, last try uh, and then we're gonna move on with the uh, It's not going to work. Too bad. Let's see. You're just going to have to trust me that it actually uh, did work uh, yesterday. But uh, sometimes. Um, all right. Uh, C4 diagrams with LLM support. Leverage uh, uh, LLM to bring some context elements and identify stakeholders. And generate initial component uh, structure and interaction with the, uh, the LLM assistance. You get your uh, whole diagrams in uh, plain text. And afterward, you can refine it uh, and solve your, uh, well, the mistakes that are made uh, generating that uh, uh, 
code, but you already saw it's going to save you a lot of time because it already generates all the relationships between the components. It, it creates all the, the components and also, uh, um, well, based on what you already uh, discussed in your uh, um, architecture. All right, um, a small uh, little uh, demo I had uh, left was uh, into, uh, trying to create, let it create arc unit, uh, uh, unit test, which uh, enforce uh, your architecture choices in your code base. It creates a, 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 a suite of uh, unit tests, which keep, uh, well, that run every time you build your software and uh, test if your architecture is still actually working uh, as it is uh, supposed to do. What can ArcUnit Arch do? It can validate the packages and class dependency structures, enforce common architecture principles. Um, you can uh, tell it to uh, check for, uh, uh, is it an Onion architecture? Is it a Microsoft? Is it, well, call it what you will. Uh, and you can also add custom rules. And, uh, okay. Some uh, benefits, because uh, I see we only have a few minutes left. Better communication, better code collaboration, and it also increases the developer uh, uh, confidence because it keeps checking whether or not you get a, a, a cyclic dependency, for instance. And you can just uh, can just do that. Um, all right, our unit. Let's have a look. Let's go back to Gemini. I'm going to, uh, ah, let's try Gemini. Uh, of course, there it is. All right. Ah, oh, come on. Ooh, well, now it's going to be spectacular. Let's see. Uh, for our backend application, we settled on using an Onion software architecture. Can you create the Arc unit test for this architecture? I hope it can. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's uh, scroll along. It just uh, generates the... Uh, the uh, these are very basic unit tests, but it... Uh, it's um, and uh, which you can uh, use directly in your uh, 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 workspace uh, where, where you develop your uh, code. Uh, let's see. This way you can streamline your arc unit tests. Uh, once again, use your LLM to uh, do the initial work after which you can actually, uh, of course, uh, uh, change or expand your uh, test set. And um, once again, it's a collaboration. All right. Uh, I've used very basic prompts at this. Uh, during my job, I use uh, a lot of more extensive prompts. Uh, I'm using uh, this framework uh, for this. Uh, you should really try it out because it gives really good prompts. But in the end, AI is a powerful tool, but architects remain crucial. Uh, use them to free up time and uh, for just uh, have a, a sparring partner, just something to bounce ideas off. Um, and, uh, because it has such an extensive uh, training set, it knows a whole lot about software architecture, so it can help a lot. But as I said before, AI will not replace the architects, but architects who use AI will replace those who don't. Thank you. Okay. If you want to contact me um, on the left side, the slides can be found there. I also put my prompts at that place. Um, 
and you can try it out for yourself and hope you get a better result than me this afternoon. Thank you.